I'm delighted to be with you this afternoon. Today is Saturday, December. Everybody moving the chairs, please straight pick it up, otherwise it's too loud. Thank you. Here we go. Okay, we're here at Gold Coast Dharma Realm with a live audience. Haven't done a live audience in quite a while. Uh, welcome to the continuing series on the picture biography of Master Empty Cloud, Xu Yin Lao Heshang, Hua Zhuan. Now, today, uh, we have something very special, which is we have a Chinese translation, better than mine. We have a real Chinese translation provided by Cliff Wang Li Fu. You should, is to translate into Zhongwen. Rugo, go away, Yan Yi Ting, Jiga Liu Li, the Putong Hua, the Fan Yi, the Hua, Niman the Kong Zhi Ban, the Yu Xia Jiao. 就是有interpretation, 在哪里你就选择Chinese就可以了,可以听到这个很流利的这个普通话翻译. Also, those of you who would like to hear today's lecture in Vietnamese, we are happy to provide you a Vietnamese translation. Uh, check the chat box, and there it is. Uh, click on that link. Also, uh, if you would like to request Dharma, we would be happy to have you do the Dharma request. Uh, you can do it in one language or two languages if you're able. Um, you'll see in the chat box you have uh, gmail. That's the place to go to send an email and request uh, an opportunity to Qingfa to request the Dharma. We would love to have you uh, have your voice go out over the internet to the world requesting Dharma. The benefits of that is in the future, uh, when you request Dharma, you make it possible for other people to hear the sutras, to hear the Buddha Dharma, and in the future, you yourself always run into opportunities to hear the Dharma, to grow in wisdom, and to meet good and wise advisors. So what a wonderful opportunity this is for folks to try it out. It's actually a quite enjoyable process. Okay, so we are now going to request Dharma. Uh, Vera, who is down in Sao Paulo, Brazil, is going to be our Dharma requester. Uh, please put your palms together, and Vera, if you'd like to request Dharma, please do it now. We see far Will the Sangha with great virtue out of compassion for the sake of this assembly and all living beings please turn the wonderful Dharma wheel to teach us how to live suffering and attain bliss and end birth and death and quickly realize no birth. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa. Homage to the blessed, noble, and perfectly enlightened one. 
Homage to the blessed, noble, and perfectly enlightened one. Namu sadanto suchedo ye olahudi sammyao samputoshi. Namu sadanto suchedo ye olahudi sammyao samputoshi. Wu shang shen shen wei miao fa bai qian wan che nan sao yu. Wo jin qian wan de shou chi yuan jie ru lai zhen shi yi. Supreme and wondrous Dharma, subtle and profound, rarely is encountered even in billions of eons. But now we see and hear it and accept it reverently. May we truly understand the Buddha's actual meaning. Welcome to our Sutra Lecture. I appreciate your being here. And this is actually not a Sutra Lecture. It's an investigation of Master Hua's storytelling of the life of Master Empty Cloud. And there are pictures included. How wonderful is that? So let's now uh, move on to our acknowledgement of country to say that the, we respectfully acknowledge the Kumbumeri people of the Ugambi language region as traditional storytellers and custodians of the land where our monastery is located. We pay our respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging and all First Nations people whose sovereignty was never ceded. Okay, there we go. Now, uh, one more thing we'd like to do before we get going is we would like to let the bell song be heard. Here we go. <coughs> bell sound wide resounds throughout a hundred million worlds. The Buddha's law is heard and spread all throughout the triple world the wondrous sounds that everywhere fill the dharma realm with peace may those who hear it gain the strength to follow in faith the buddha's path now, you all who sing so nicely, if you can do this one together. Oh, wow. No, I won't do it. Chung Sheng Chuan San Chen Jian Nei Fo Fa Yang Wan Yi Guo Zhong Gong Xuan Qi Ba Jie He Ping Li Yi Bao Tan Nuo Hou De. Good. The last time we were at Berkeley Monastery with Master Gong Chen, he instructed his uh, student Master Fa Ming, to do the right way in Chinese uh, before the lecture. Oh my goodness, it was quite marvelous. Very Zhuang Yan. Lots of ah, 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 you know, the bell sound, wa a i resound. We're like, oh, bunung di. Chang lai, mei guo xi fang australia ye hui you zi ji de zhuang yan. Xian dai wo men jiu bi jiao jian dan, bi jiao jian dan. Okay, cheng xin zhi dui la. Okay, welcome again to Master Empty Cloud's picture biography. The ni men you er ji ma? Good, hao. Okay, ke yi ting dao de zhi dui la. All right, uh, let's see here. Today we're going to do two sections, two stories. And we're going to uh, cover uh, two aspects of Master Empty Cloud's life that are quite different. But uh, his life included both of these aspects. They seem like extremes, but we'll, we'll show you how. By the way, you all see who this is right here, right? Right down the bottom there of our screen, that's our teacher. 
And to his right, this monk to the right, anybody know who that is? Renshima. Lao He Shang Yo Shou Bian. Hai Deng Lao He Shi. Shaolin Hai Deng. Hai Deng. So he was, uh, he is also in our Weiyang Zong. Mm, Weiyang Zong, Nigga Yi Mai. Okay, so now what I said, what kind of extremes did our teacher go through in his life? Well, um, hold on here. Okay, it's not behaving, why not? Here we go. So we'll go back. We'll go back here. So this is uh, number 16. Uh, number 16, our teacher, uh, our grand teacher, Master Empty Cloud, became a monk. He was 20 years old. He took the complete precepts. Now, he had to disobey his father, <clears throat> his father to do that. His father wanted him to go off and marry and become a normal person, right? So Master Empty Cloud wanted to cultivate the way. And we're lucky that he continued his resolve, otherwise we would be telling a different story today. But here, he, age 20, he took the complete precepts, became a monk. Now, you think about it, what do you do next? If you're, you become a monk, you're now uh, part of the Buddha's Sangha, you are Tian Ren Shi, the teacher of gods and humans, you are a Fu Tian Sang, a field of blessing monk, what do you do? Well, find a monastery, right? No, not if you're Master Empty Cloud. What did you do? What did he do? He went out into the cliffs. He went out to a cave and he cultivated in seclusion. He went out beyond the outback. He went behind the outback. The outback is already way out there, but he went further back. Look at the, the picture. Tigers, foxes. Here's our monk down here, cultivating, boiling tea in the cave. Very rugged. Most people can't even walk out there, much less live out there. So that's what he did. Cultivated ascetic practices. Ku xiu. He jiu yan shui dong zhong ji shi shu mao sung zi. Okay, so he out there in the outback, he ate pine nuts, and lichen when he was hungry, when he was thirsty, qing quan, xi shui. When he was thirsty, he used, didn't even have a cup. He used his hands to drink the water. So really rugged. Wow, ku xiu. Most people can't do it. Now, something changed. He, the pendulum went as far as it could go towards ku xing, towards asceticism. But then something happened. What happened? A monk came out and said, down in the nearest temple, we have Miao Lao He Shang, Miao Jing Lao He Shang, says, he sent me out there to tell you that your Ku Xiu is already enough. Go la. You have lots of wisdom going. However, that's not the way the Buddha did it. The Buddha is Fu Hui Fu Hui Shuang Man. You need both wisdom and blessings. You have to come back to cultivate blessings. Come on back. You can bow repentances. We'll give you work to do. Otherwise, you might leave the path. You'll leave the middle way. You might become an immortal or something, only worried about your body. So what did he do? Master, Master Empty Cloud had been bowing the a one for Chan out in the cave. He bowed the 10,000 Buddha's repentance. So he said, okay, yi jiao feng xing, I will do what you tell me to do. Okay, now he's 24 years old, comes back to the local monastery, and he becomes what's called shui tou, 
What is the shreito? The shreito is this. You carry, carry water in a bucket for the monastery from the stream because the monastery was out in the woods. So he becomes the shreito. Then what does he do? He becomes the taito, right? Yuan to. He goes out and becomes a farmer. Look. He totally devotes himself to service to the monastery. He could be meditating out in the woods. No, it's time to now cultivate blessing. So he comes back to the monastery. Here he is in the garden. And he's learning how to be a farmer. So how different, right, from the, the distant mountains down to the fields of the monastery. And uh, the story talks about how he was, got really good at knowing where to plant, how much fertilizer, how much water, when to harvest, etc. So he became very helpful in the monastery. Okay, what's more, now, another year passes, he becomes what's called the Xing Tang. He's the attendant. We heard about this one uh, two weeks ago. So what did he do? He served as the attendant in the dining hall. Look at this. He goes around with a bucket of rice, and when the monks do what's called guo tang, uh, eating in a formal style, they don't talk. There's not a single sound, not a voice in the tall. If you want more food, you can put your bowl out, you can hold your chopsticks a special way, and the server comes by, gives you more rice, more soup, more vegetables, goes on. Um, we heard about how Pu Xian Pu Sa, when he was the Xing Tang, he carried spices in his robe. So if you like salty food, he'd give you some salt. Oh, he knows this monk likes sour food, gives him some vinegar. This monk likes hot food, he gives him la jiao jiang, you know, so he gives him pepper. So pleasing everybody, cultivating blessing. Fu bao, yo fu bao. Okay, now you think, okay, good enough. Nope, not enough. He is now the Dian Zuo, another year. The Dian Zuo is what? Cook. So he becomes the cook. He's in there knowing how to bring in just enough rice, not to waste, but nobody goes hungry. Just enough vegetables, doesn't waste any. Uh, he, can, he knows how to make leftovers, make them go longer. So he uses the sambao, the uh, he uses it just right how to please everybody without wasting and also work in harmony he doesn't fight it's really hard because these are jobs under pressure these are difficult jobs in the kitchen so there he is being the cook and the dining hall so from being an ascetic way out in the mountains okay, alone with the tigers and the, the, the wolves. And then he comes back and he's the gardener, he's the water boy, he's the, the server, now he's the cook. Okay, three years. So there he is. All right, he gets the word that his father dies. Oh, he hears, sad, that his father never quite recovered from the loss of his first wife. She died in childbirth. So Master Empty Cloud's coming was the cause of his mother's leaving. Pretty sad. So the father remarried, but didn't, he was never, never quite the same. His father retired, went back to Hunan, and Master Empty Cloud's stepmother his two fiancées, actually they were his wives, but they were not formally, they were wives in name only. They all left home. They became nuns. That was the story of last week. So his influence on the women in his family was pretty profound. So that's the story. Okay, we're caught up. Now what? Now what's he gonna do? You ready? Here is today's story. Are we ready? Let's, we can read it together. I'll give you a line and you give it back. How's that? 
公于永泉寺仁知四年，皆苦行当事，既常助公众见钱，亦不接受。每日只食粥一鱼，而身体此颇健康。四世山中，有古月常德，为众中苦行第一之榜样。十相过访，深谈发愿，效法古德。All right， 其实我们不必合掌，这个已经习惯了，这个不是佛的字，这师傅的字也可以合掌，我不必合掌。OK， 呃、uh, ，Let's see， 呃、um, ，Let's can we read this all together? What do you think? Let's try. Here we go. The master held posts for four years at Yongquan Monastery, undergoing austere practices and serving others. He would not accept money offered to the Sangha members from the monastery. Although he ate only one bowl of rice porridge a day, his health was excellent. At this time, the venerable master Gu Yue, which was called Ancient Moon. Who dwelled in the mountains was the foremost exemplar of ascetic cultivation. Visiting him and engaging in profound conversation, the master resolved to emulate the virtuous monk's practices. Okay, so think about the、uh, what do we call this? Your Dao Ye, your work in the Dao. Master Empty Cloud、uh, had to leave his family behind. So that he could go off in the mountains, and and cultivate, and without people saying you should get married, you should get a job, you should make your family, you should carry on the name, he just said, I want to wake up, I want to get enlightened, I want to follow the Buddha. So he ran away, became a monk, then ran away to the mountains. Someone came out and said, You've been here for three years, time to plant blessings. So so from over here, living all by himself, now. The pendulum comes back over here, and he is the Cai Tou Shui Tou Xing Tang Dian Zuo. He all these jobs at the monastery, which are hard work. That's really hard work to serve others. Do you have time to meditate? You're too tired. You have to cultivate. You have to cultivate blessings and service. So karma yoga, they say. Well, he did that for four years. So then, his he gets the news that. His family is basically gone. Father's mother's dead. Father's dead.、Uh, two wives and stepmother. They're in the sangha. So what do you do? Who are you running from? Nobody. So he hears about Gu Yue Chan Shi, Gu Yue Chan Shi, Old Moon, Master Old Moon, who is a real Ku Xing Sang. He's a real Chan Hezi, a Chan meditator in the mountains. So uh oh, trouble. Master Empty Cloud goes out and talks to him, and you know, as soon as he sees what he's doing, his heart flips. This is for me. This is what I want to do. I want to cultivate wisdom and see what see what I can do. I want my wisdom to grow. So sure enough, he he says, enough. Four years down in the mountain, down in the the monastery. Enough. I'm going to go cultivate the way. He said, "Take a look. Here is、uh, not quite clear who is re- being refused here. What does this look like to you all? Is this is empty cloud or is this empty cloud? So, so, that one is Shi Lao, or the other one is that one. Not clear. This is the Buddha Chan Shi. He is refusing." 不清楚。Anyway, so the point is, Master Empty Cloud went out and met、uh, somebody. He said, "Ah,、oh, I want to be like you. This is why I left him." 
Maybe a sure verse will give us a, a hint. Okay, Chule coming out of his of his peers, Ba being extraordinary, Chiong Bu Tong, ultimately a different kind of guy. Qi shi ro yan neng ren qing. How could ordinary vision recognize this? Fu gui gong ming, zhi du wai. Having blessings, honor, reputation, this is all external. Li yang hui yu bu dong xin. Benefit, uh, being uh, slander, so praise and slander alike do not move my mind. Above his peers in a class by himself, truly outstanding. How could ordinary vision perceive this? He placed himself beyond wealth, honor, merit, and fame. Nor could his mind be moved by offerings, praise, or slander. Okay, so now what's going on here? Here's this young man who is now, he's been a monk for five years. Um, and I guess maybe seven years. He's starting to ask himself questions. What's it all about? He has to make some decisions about uh, what's his future, you know? Is he going to become a big abbot with a lot of power? Is he going to build monasteries? Is he going to go out and lecture on sutras and get disciples? What's he going to do? So... Where's the pendulum? We've seen it go all the way over here for ascetic Kuxing, all the way over here for Zhong Fu. Where is it now? Anybody know? Do you know the story? You read the book, right? So you know what he does. What does he do? He goes back to ascetic cultivation. Ta jiu hui qu, ku xing xiu chan xi bing. Age 27. 1866, this is happening after the American Civil War. Uh, that's what was going on then. Okay, are we ready? Let's take a look. I'll read you a line, you give it back. Ready? Nian Ji Xuan Zang. Xuan Zang Fa Shi. Okay. Xi Wei Fu Yin Zhi Qian. Xi Wei Fu Yin Zhi Qian. Xian Zi Duan Lian Xing Lu. Xian Zi Duan Lian Xing Lu. Duan. Oh, I'm sorry. I did the Hujang thing again. That's fine. Okay, never mind. Duan Shi Deng Gong Zuo. Duan Shi Deng Gong Zuo. Ru Zi Jing Jin. Xin Xiang Wang Zhi. Xin Xiang Wang Zhi. Dao Ye Wei Cheng. Jue Yi Ci Zhi. Gui Dong Chan Chan. Guo Ru Song Mao. Yin Quan Shui Zhi Sheng Huo. Okay, really good. So this is Shifu's uh, one yen one. This is Master Hua's text. He selected these stories from Master Empty Cloud's uh, nian pu and also from talking to him. So this is this is Shifu's Chinese rent, uh, writing in one yen one of an episode from the life of Master Empty Cloud. Okay, are we ready? Let's try together. Here we go, ready? During his 27th year, the Master resolved to practice austerities and vowed to end birth and death. He thought of how in the past, Dharma Master Shrenzang, before going to India, first forged his own discipline with practices such as fasting and walking long distances. 
The master liked that sort of vigor. Although he had fulfilled his duties in serving the monastery, he had not yet completed his cultivation towards the Tao. Having made up his mind to succeed, the master resigned his official role in the monastery. He returned to the cave to sit in dhyana and subsisted on lichen and spring water. Okay, so he's now 27 years old, been a monk for seven years. He says, I'm wasting my time uh, down here among people. I want to do what the Buddha did. I want to succeed in my cultivation. That's the thing that matters the most. So he made that resolve. Mm. Does that sound familiar? We have uh, four monastics in the room here, and we also have some lay people here who cultivate really hard. So this is not, especially because Shurfu, Master Hua, is our teacher, this kind of resolve is not strange to us. This, yeah, you can see that empty cloud being Xue Qi Fang Gang, right? He's a young, strong monk, um, and he's had the flavor. He knows what, it li what it's like to live by yourself out in the mountains. He can do it. So he spent four years down among people and cultivated blessings, got to know people, learned how the monastery community works, and he decided comparing that road and comparing to this road, he wants to cultivate the way. So uh, Shurfu tells the story here about Master Xuanzang. Do people know what happened? So Xuanzang Fa Shi um, decided he was gonna to go to India to get the sutras and bring them back and the commentaries. He wanted, particularly he wanted the Yuche Shirdi Lun, Yogacara Bhumi Shastra because Maitreya Bodhisattva was his, uh, his model. So he said, I'm going to go to India. And he'd heard, <coughs> he'd heard in the monasteries, people talk about the, the other monks who had tried and how hard it was, how difficult it was. So what did uh, Master Shenzang do? He was living in a monastery. He thought, I've got to toughen my body up. So he took furniture, he took this chair, and he put this chair on top of the table. And then he took that chair, and he put that chair on top of this chair. And he practiced climbing up on the furniture in the room. <laughs> now, not recommending this. I don't want to see Jin Shuan Shi Ni Bu Kui Da. So you have to strengthen your body some other way. Okay. So he would go for long walks, and he ate bad food and little food because he knew that out there on the road, it was going to be difficult. So Master Empty Cloud says, me too. I want to do that too. He, I like that vigor. So he had fulfilled his duties in serving the monastery, but he said, I'm still man wai han, right? Hai meo, I don't have da ding li. So he made his mind up that he was going to succeed he resigned from his role in the monastery. He went back to the cave to meditate and subsisted. Look, it says, Guo Ru Song Mao. Song Mao is what? Anybody know? Okay, what is Song Mao? It says, Lichen. Lichen. Okay, hold on. No. Song Mao. Right? Song Zhan. Okay, the question is, is that, is this Song Mao? Let's see here. Song Ran is okay. Is it this? Ingai Bu Shi Ba. Gang Gang Nega. Nega. Song Ma. Song Ma. 
or this? Song Mao Ai. Okay, Yunnan Ren Bu Song Mao Li Xi Guan Jing Shi. Okay, so some people say it's pine nuts, other people say it's pine needles. It's somewhere in between, but this is edible. Kui Chi. And this is what Master Empty Cloud could eat because why? You don't have to cook. Bubi, Bubi Kai Ho, Bubi Shaola, right? Bubi Kai Shui, Song Zhen. So there we go. Yeah. Song Mao. Okay, so something like that. So that's what he ate. That's really what he ate out there in the woods. And you think, ooh, wow, ku ah. <laughs> he really did. And then, yin chuan shui, zhi sheng ho. When he was thirsty, he found clean water. Now, I know for a fact that right now, down in Fujian, Fujian Sheng, um, there are lakes and uh, streams that are clean now. They we were just at we just went to uh, Qian Dao Hu. Qian Dao Hu is in Zhejiang, but it's uh, the water there. They say is clean enough to drink. So China still has some clean environments that are not polluted, and. Back in 1860, you know there was a lot of clean environments. So, Master Empty Cloud, here he is. Look at this great picture. Notice he hasn't had a haircut in a long time, right? He's got a band to keep it out of his face. Look at his clothes. His robe is all patched because there's no, there's no uh, lay people to offer his new robes. Living in a cave, but... He looks pretty happy. Smile on his face with his palms together. Right? Wow, Bu Jian Dan. So, he returned to the cave to sit in Dhyana, subsisted on lichen and spring water. Now, um, again, when I, when I read this and we're sending it out, right now we have 109 people online listening in. Um, I want to say that Master Empty Cloud was extraordinarily strong. He was a strong young monk. And he was, you know that his patience, Renru Bolomi, was really strong. Because why? This is hard. This is a hard lifestyle. Uh, you might do it for a week. You might do it for two weeks. Um, boy, by the third week, you know what people, you know what we miss? Very funny. He, every, different people miss different things. Some people miss salt. No salt out there. Other people miss oil. No oil. Other people miss coffee. Oh, aha. Uh -huh. There's no Starbucks out there. There's no Zarafa. So, you know, other people, they miss kao mian bao, you know, toast. Other people miss, you know, shifan. You don't, never know what, everybody has a different kind of body chemistry. Um, it's very difficult to do without so much. No comfort. The, you and the weather become one thing. You and when it rains, you are the rain. When it's hot, you're the heat. When it's misty and foggy, your body is just like a cloud, you know. So very, very difficult. And he did it uh, and loved it. This was, this was the way to live for him. Here we go. Gao sheng heng yuan qing gui shen Jin shi wei kai yi nian zhen Si zhi yin xue xi jing lu the eminent monk's practices and vows alarm the ghosts and spirits. 
The sincerity of one true thought breaks apart even stone and metal. Resigning from office, he withdrew to a cave to practice still contemplation. In precepts and samadhi, he steeped himself while the sun of his wisdom grew bright. Okay, beautiful poem by Shifu, right? In this great, it's shen, chen, ming, and lü. So the lofty monk practices and bows, qing gui shen. This is Shifu speaking from experience. Ghosts and spirits can't compete when they see a human taking on bitterness, willingly cultivating ascetic practice. Jin shi wei kai yi nian zhen. Even things that are super hard, metals, rocks, will open up if your mind is completely focused. Uh, he let go of his official duties and practiced qing lu. Qing lu is chan, right? Dhyana. Jie ding, shun xiu, samadhi, precepts and samadhi cultivated. The, the sun of wisdom is bright. So, how about that? Well, we, um, are you ready for one more? Let's do one more. Uh, we've got time here. Because why? This is the extension of, this is the result of the cause we just heard. Are we ready? Let's try it together. I'll give you a line, you give it back. Ready? I'm sorry, one more time. Shan 一心正念, ah, one, one more time. 一心正观念佛, 一心正观念佛, 二通迥然,人间以为美,不而即奔。Okay, what is he saying? Ready? Do we do it together? From his 28th to his 30th year, the master lived in a cave on a cliffside, gathering mountain grasses and herbs to satisfy his hunger. He did not eat cooked food in the normal way. At first, he experienced many glorious states of being, yet he did not cling to those experiences. He recited the Buddha's name with concentrated focus. As the days passed, his body grew lighter, and he experienced robust good health. He felt as if he were flying when he walked. His hearing was keen, and his eyes discerned the most minute detail. The pupils of his eyes glowed so that when people saw him, they thought he was a goblin and took to their heels in fright. Oh boy. Right? Now, where is the pendulum? Over here? No, it's over here. Really extreme, extreme uh, cultivation. For two more years, 28th to, to 30th, he lived out in the caves. He did not eat cooked food. There wasn't any cooked food to eat. Nobody was making offerings. He didn't let anyone know he was there. So this paragraph is really interesting. He had all kinds of jingjie arose, but Shifu points out that he carefully avoided zhuo, uh, you know, grabbing onto these states. Why? Um, when you are using the Dharma to cultivate samadhi, your earth, air, fire, and water, di shui huo feng, become different. You're actually physically changing the 
makeup of your body and the uh, magnetism of the meridians, right? You got the nigamai bo. They're they're all different now because of the way you cultivate. If you are not careful, if you don't do it ru fa, you can get lost. You're in the spiritual realm now, and there are other beings in the spiritual realm who can come in and mess with you if you're not careful. So, the way you do it, go to the wu shi zhong yin mo, go to the 50 skanda demons and follow that, and you won't, you won't go wrong. That's, that's what those teachings are for, for people like Master Empty Cloud. But look what happened. His body grew lighter, and he felt like it was flying when he walked. He was so, you could say, uh, ungrounded that the more he cultivated, the more he became like a shen xian, like an immortal. His hearing was keen. His eyes discerned the most minute detail. The pupils of his eyes glowed. People saw him. They thought he was a goblin. They ran away. His eyes are glowing. Okay, you may think, what? Really? Here he is. Here are the people running away, <laughs> right? Because they look, ah, is Ah, is Ah. So, his hair is even longer. Now he's got a beard. Oh boy. So, what did Shifu say? Shifu said, Xue Ju Ye Chu Yuan Shi Fong Shao Yu Zhi Zu Wu So Zhang Bu Yu Guan Xin He Sheng Zhu Xiao Yao San Jie Ren Xi Dong Abiding in a primitive cave far off. Oh, abiding in a primitive way far off in a wilderness cave, knowing contentment, his desires are few. Thus, no struggle or contention. He didn't speak. He observed his mind, how thoughts rise and abide. Wandering the threefold world, he traveled freely from east to west. Okay, now, a lot of people would say, that sounds pretty good. Is this, can we do this? Or, is this wrong? Or, is this success? Maybe, now, think about somebody else whose story we know, Shakyamuni Buddha, as the prince, Prince Siddhartha, right? He did the same thing. He went out in the mountains for four years, uh, six years, that is to say, uh, and uh, cultivated ascetic practices like this. Um, our story of the Buddha doesn't have this detail. But Master Empty Cloud was really, really, really vigorous. And he knew the flavor of monastery living. Didn't want that. That was just going to keep him in birth and death. So he's out here now trying his very best to break through. Poor buttons, Han, right? to get to his fundamental understanding of the way, but he's on the path of being a shen xian, or even worse, maybe a guai wu, <laughs> you know. He could become something else if he's not really careful. So, okay, that's our story. We did three today. Um, I'll tell you my, my story. Um, when Master Haidung visited Gold Mountain Monastery, this monk right here, um, he, this was 1985, I believe, and uh, one night when uh, Haidung Lao Fashu was staying at uh, Gold Mountain Monastery, Jinshan Si, I was downstairs in the kitchen. It was already like nine o'clock. I, I hadn't gone to sleep yet. And I came around the corner, and here was Haidung. And Master Haidung was about five feet two. He's just this, this tall, very short stature. And 
I saw him and I thought, ooh, do I dare say anything to him? You know, maybe, uh, I don't know if I dare gambuga. So I went over and I put my palms together. I said, uh, you know, and so Master Empty Cloud and Master Haidung turned around and looked at me and opened his eyes and I thought I saw flames. <laughs> I thought I saw fire in his eyes. And then he turned away like that. He just went and looked at me and then turned back and walked away. And I'm like, ah. Oh. So the next morning, I saw Sherpa. I said, Sherpa, Sherpa, last night I spoke to Haidung Basher. And he opened his eyes, and there was like fire in there, Sherpa. <laughs> Sherpa said, Dang rang la, ta mang la, ta mei yo jie jing guo nu ren, ni dong ma. <laughs> oh. He said, of course he is. He never got near any women in his entire life. Do you understand? I'm like, oh, sort of. <laughs> so there is a connection. This is, my, this is a true story. This is actually what, what Sherpa said, how he explained it. So if you think about Master Empty Cloud, Somebody wonders, how could his eyes glow? How could he fly? Likewise, his whole life, he was a celibate monk. And that is to say, now, Shurfu's commentary, similar, and you notice Master Haidung is sitting next to Master Empty Cloud. When you are practicing this kind of fan hung, Brahma conduct, where you take your internal sanbao, nei sanbao, jing qi shen, and cultivate it with samadhi, there are real changes. It's a real change. This is not an idea. This is not, you know, thinking about the Tao. There are real transformations. It's really difficult because if you, even let's say you're living a celibate lifestyle, it's very easy to get angry. And if you get angry, you can lose all your chi and it'll go out. But let me remind people that Master Hai Deng is known for what? Yi Zhi Chan Gong, which we saw. He is the only person that we know in the Chinese martial arts world who could do a one finger stand. He practiced Tong Zi Gong. Tong Zi Gong means you have been celibate your whole life. And he was able to hold his body up on a single finger. So he had such control of his uh, body's weight and the chi and the center of gravity, he could stand on one finger. And we saw him do it. He demonstrated. And it's like, even it's, you know, you see these young children who can do multiple flips and things. To be able to hold yourself up on a single finger, you're a little different. You're not quite in the, in the world, and yet there you are. So Master Empty Cloud uh, eyes glowed. Master Haidung's eyes glowed. And when I asked Shurfu, he said, well, it's because he lives fan hung, pure conduct. So, how about that? Oh my goodness, very interesting. Okay, let me share my screen again. Um, here we are. Now, I have something to announce, which is, we have events at City of 10,000 Buddhas coming up. Here they are. Take a look here. Uh, there we go. June 15th is the Venerable Master's Nirvana Day. Okay, here we go. Right there, this is Liu Yue. Shu Yang Li. This is Nong Li Wu Yue, Chu Shi. Sunday, Master Hua is entering Nirvana, right? There it is right there. So um, the scene next switches to Buddha Root Farm, two weeks in Oregon, 
福，耕地。嗯、um, ，You want to go to www. 呃、uh, 啊、uh, ，Let's see. Not、uh, I don't want to send you there now. It's confusing. It's not quite ready. But I want folks to start thinking about the events at CTDB for next year. So some people like to do the work week. It's a very wonderful time to be with a small group of people, preparing for the week of Buddha Root Farm up in Oregon, Fuogundi. It's a wonderful retreat out in nature, quite marvelous, one whole week. Okay, now there's an event at Monastery Dharma I. There will be a three-day、uh, Fu San. At Xue Shan Si, the dates are not confirmed yet, but it's probably in there. July 11. Let's see. We should go here next. July 7 to July 15 is Lay Bodhisattva Precepts. That includes a week of instruction. Okay, Qi Hao Dao Shi Wu Hao. Midway through the week, we have、uh, Yomingjie, precepts for the deceased. Okay, and people who take the Saija Pusajie can also take Sushir Arshoyen. <clears throat> Now these events are not on the calendar. We didn't get them determined enough soon enough, so you won't find if you go to the July calendar.、Um, There is, however, a Guanyinchi at CTDB on July 21 to 27, 20 to 27. So the reason why I'm showing you this is, folks here in Australia, folks in Singapore, Malaysia, Taiwan, China, Hong Kong, if you would like to take part in CTDB DRBA. Summer events. Now you can start thinking about these dates and whether this is something you might. We're, we're what eight months away, so you, can, you have some time to think about. In general, you want June, mid June, to mid July. Okay, is that good? Put that on the calendar. Start thinking about it. Will be if there are any, any changes coming up, we'll let you know. But that's at this point. That's our. Those are our plans for CTDB for 2024、uh, retreats at CTDB. Okay, there we go. Can we dedicate merit and thank you all for joining? This is one hour of time after lunch on a Saturday to. Look at the life of an amazing monk who is our teacher, our grand teacher. Compassionate 
sitting, if you'd like to join me in bowing to the Buddha, let's make three bows here. E one shin, R one shin, San one shin. Bow in respect to the Venerable Master. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you all next week. We appreciate the hard work of our volunteers.